Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are covering the overview of the RMA Retirement Management Advisor Certification, focusing on retirement income and risk mindset. We are lucky enough to have our Director of Programs here at the Investments and Wealth Institute, Mike Kurz, joining us on today's call. So a few administrative things. We are on a Zoom platform today. All lines are muted. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type those into the Q&A chat feature. We will go ahead and answer those at the end of today's presentation. This will be recorded and provided to you at a later time, and no CE hours are awarded for our informational session today. My name is Carrie Estes. I'm an enrollment counselor here at the Investments and Wealth Institute. My colleague, Gray Bullard, is also online, as is our special guest speaker, Mike Kurz. Um, Gray and I's role here is to simply hear about your educational goals, see how our certification and online and live programs and educational offerings can help align with those goals. So please reach out to us with any questions about RMA or any of our offerings here at the Investments and Wealth Institute. So who are we? A quick overview of the Investments and Wealth Institute through those certifications, conferences, and online education courses. Our mission is to deliver premier investment consulting and wealth management education. Um, both firms and individuals turn to us for those professional development needs. And you'll see that here in our institute ecosystem, a cool little infographic. Uh, we are best known for our elite certification programs, our SEMA, a focus on investment management, our certified investment management analyst program. CPWA, certified private wealth advisor certification, focuses on the needs of high net worth and wealth management. And then again, of course, today, our RMA Retirement Management Advisor Certification Program. We provide both in-person and education and um, in-person education and online courses um, that cover a wide variety of financial service topics. And we put on some pretty cool specialty events like Women in Wealth and Diversity Elevates. We also have three award-winning publications. So you can see here at our core, we're in a trade association an education provider, and a standards body for financial advisors. So let's get to our special guest speaker. Here is the wonderful Mike Kurz. Um, he is the director of programs and has more than 20 years of experience in the world of wealth management. Mike serves to grow the strength of he, the Institute and each of our programs. So I will ask Mike to join us now. Thank you so much for having or uh, jumping on our call today and walking us through the RMA program. Um, Hi. Hello. Good to see you guys. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'll start with the RMA program overview. We often, often through these informational webinars, talk about the how. How do I earn the RMA program um, and the steps to do so? Um, but I'd prefer that we um, you spend some time on the why. Why earn the RMA? Why is retirement knowledge important as an advisor? And um, yeah, take it away, Mike. Yeah, so we, we love sharing about our certifications, and the RMA is certainly a special one. Uh, and advisors and those that support advisors, wholesalers, external and internal, come to us and say, you know, there's, there's been years of support and, and education about growing wealth to the point that you're ready to retire, but certainly that shifting transition into from accumulation into decumulation is a very important one. So that very first thing, that relevant content is how do you shift into retire that retirement income world? How do you shift into decumulation is certainly an important one. And as part of that, uh, the world that advisors and asset managers live in is such a competitive one. How do you differentiate the value that you bring? How do you help clients and advisors take action in a way that shows your value? And so those top two are so big and as part of that, we want that to influence and have an impact on our advisors' businesses. So as they grow their, uh, their clientele, as they help more people, as they have greater impact and, and value in their, their clients' lives, that, that number three there, giving higher compensation uh, or helping folks take that next step and get that promotion is such a big part of that. And we see that through more confidence with clients, through more confidence in those conversations and we believe all these things are wrapped together with that number five, that expert instruction. We have so many great folks. The RMA is full of practitioners that live and breathe retirement income every day, um, not just living in an academic world uh, in a laboratory with a white lab coat on. They're actually doing this every day and serving clients. So uh, 
we said those are the, the big five reasons uh, why advisors uh, are attracted to the RMA, and we love it. Oh, I think you're still on mute. There we are. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to dive into the RMA content. I know you are um, a big contributor to the content of the RMA program and, and really getting your hands in there and, and finding the relevance um, of, of retirement uh, management. And um, I'm hoping you can kind of highlight some of the, the ones that you see here. This is a great opportunity to take a screenshot um, and dive into what makes the RMA tick. Yeah, we, 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 as I said, content is so huge and we love this graphic in this wheel that shows the client at this very center, right? Everything revolves around the client situation and the uniqueness around um, each situation. We're gonna dig in a little bit more in just a bit, but this client, this graphic for the client showing them at the center starts with that, that diagnostic kit of understanding the process of getting through this, developing the household balance sheet and cash flows, for instance, so much um, software today really does run a nice uh, projection through the end of, do you have enough assets and income to meet your expenses through the end of retirement? But we have a great household balance sheet that helps you build that today and capitalize those expenses to see just very simply, how much cash do you need in a big bucket today to fund retirement and are you close? And so that diagnostic kick is that first step of saying, do you have enough? Right? What have you hit your number? Are you set up in the, in that position? Are we counting all your future income, all the capital that will be driven from things like social security, or maybe you might have to work a part time job during retirement because you love it, or do some consulting, or you're selling a business. So those things included in that, um, and then as you see going through that wheel, uh, uh, understanding, assessing those specific risks, and that's such a huge part of the RMA content, is what are the unique risks. Um, for that individual client. You know, when you're accumulating, it's three things. It's right, it's diversification, asset allocation, and rebalancing. And if you do those three things, nothing else really matters. And you can apply model portfolios to your whole book of business. And to, if you're a moderate client, you're pretty much a moderate client across the board. And if it's tax deferred money, it's even easier. Um, individual clients giving in that retirement income world are different. And you see that where it says retirement allocations that risk and as you go through that RMA toolbox, then starting to choose what specific products are we gonna implement with, right? How do we fit annuities into this? How do we fit total return into this? What's our cash reserves on our floor for these pieces? And certainly that last piece of how do we, you know, deliver this to the client in a way that makes sense? How do we deliver this to a client in a way that we're building this retirement income plan for long-term? So it's something they can commit to and it makes sense to, uh, to them. And uh, we love this, this graphic. It's a, it's a super important one. So uh, um, that's, that's a big, big dive into the content for the RMA, Carrie. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. And um, as you mentioned, risk being a large component of the curriculum and what that looks like. So we're going to spend some time on that today. Retirement risk. Um, so it really starts with understanding that client um, mindset. And so, Mike, if you don't mind kind of moving us through these slides and how risk fits within the RMA curriculum. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, you know, so often when we talk about those, those three things of accumulation, um, advisors get really focused on the statement, right? The, the account statement, the one single portfolio or the group of portfolios, and they, they miss the broader uh, holistic and comprehensive scale of what are these things um, that impact those clients? What are those unique things? We see here long-term care, disability, business risk, income and estate tax, right? What's very unique about this client? We talk about an accumulation diversification really means not putting all your eggs in one basket, right? We know that from when we were little, but diversification in retirement really means how do we eliminate the reality that one risk could cause the failure of our entire plan. One risk could cause the failure of our entire plan. So how do we protect those risks? How do we manage that? How do we decide how to fund those risks and, and move those off of the client's balance sheet? Um, it's such an important part. And as we move through the slides, we'll, we'll dig a little deeper into what this looks like. Uh, the Society of Actuaries, we love this. They do great work. And I know that Actuaries, we, we love to, to tease about 
the introvertness of actuaries, but man, they do a fantastic job. And the Society of Actuaries, if you haven't spent much time on the SOA.org website, I would encourage you to. Uh, and looking at that list of risk, um, things that are unique uh, to retirement planning. Look at the loss of ability to live independently, death of a spouse, unforeseen needs of family members, um, bad advice or fraud or theft, right? These are things that we, that we don't quite appreciate in the accumulation years that can be devastating during retirement income. And, and for the RMA curriculum, what we focus on, you see these are the primary, um, this primary uh, focus for that platform or construct of talking with clients about risk. We want it to be manageable in the sense that we don't want it to be a conversation of 180 risk. We do have to focus and get kind of narrow so that we can work through these. But as you see these blocks, um, this is then understanding as we're building that retirement income plan, what's unique to you, your family, which of these risks are things that we can diversify away from, right? So some of that is systematic risk, some of that's unsystematic risk, that unique to households, unique to you. And if we, as we move to the next slide, we'll see that that, that framework that we adjust in the, or, or share in the RMA that allows you to adjust that focus for your client mapping out that structure, it's that hazard exposure consequence probability. You can say that over and over, right? That hazard exposure consequence probability. How do we, number one, as we sit down and we're, we're counseling families, right? We're counseling the household, building that retirement income. First, we have to identify what's unique to you, which means great discovery, asking great questions, digging deeper, right? Truly doing a comprehensive look. And then what are those hazards? And for you specifically, Mr. and Mrs. Client and your household, what's your unique exposure, right? The dollar value of those exposures. And then as we move through those, and you can go to the next slide, we start to build that framework of, of looking at those hazard consequences, writing that out, building that description. And the next slide starts to see um, as we go through that, how do we imagine you know, a broader scale on the next one? Oops, sorry. <laughs> I um. I was thinking there was one more. I was thinking there was one more slide. No, yeah, no. The, This this uh this mapping out process then allows us to get very specific for the client, right? So the biggest concern that you see moving from um the working years and accumulation years to being retired. Roger Whitney on our RMA commission, I love what, how he describes it. He says, when you stop working and you discontinue that paycheck, you lose your superpower, right? Or certainly the feeling of the superpower of earning an income and having that consistent paycheck coming in the door. And so then suddenly you shift from feeling confident and secure and that things are okay to suddenly feeling insecure and not confident and not feeling good about it. So that then changes that retirement income plan or how we build it. Mapping out these, uh, these outcome focused risk exposure helps us to then um, narrow in for those clients to build a plan that's actually a, a deeply uh, organized, very well thought out, good match for the client in this phase of their life. So yeah, great, great slide. Absolutely. Um, it's very relatable thinking about retirement for really anyone. I'm not anywhere close to retirement, but hearing about the importance of risk and how, you know, that accumulation phase, which I'm in now, and then my parents are in that decumulation phase and everything you're saying really resonates with those conversations we're having within our household, um, even as a, a family unit. So um, next we're going to dive into social programs, the importance of social security and Medicare and um, how RMA really takes a unique um, route in addressing these, where a lot of retirement-focused certifications don't address that. So, Mike, if you can dive into first Social Security and, and the importance of, of the knowledge there. Oh, this is such an important one. You know, we last week we were we were in Nashville for the RMA capstone. It was wonderful. We had a, a full a room of folks, and I was telling the story that I'd, I had a gone to bed in the hotel and I woke up hot three or four times, right? But not, I didn't actually get out of bed to turn the thermostat down cooler, but I just kept getting completely uncomfortable, taking the covers off, cooling down, 
waking up with the covers on again, too hot, taking the covers off. But I didn't actually get out of bed and go turn the thermostat down. I just lived with being miserably uncomfortable, right? So you're just kind of like, I'm just going to tolerate it. Social security is so much like that for your clients, right? So they may not be calling you as the advisor saying, okay, advisor, help me with my social security. Help me understand my social security. You may not be getting tons of questions about that. This is something you need to be actively reaching out to your clients and saying, even those prior years before you get to retirement, talking about those uh, issues. I can tell you, I talked with someone recently uh, in their 40s that said, um, you mean I'm covered with Social Security? Like I, I could have Social Security benefits? Well, abs yes, absolutely, right? Even folks in their 50s may not truly understand the impact of Social Security. And if we look at these lines, the blue, the gray, and the purple, and look at the, to the far right on the gray one, that 1.3, that's $1.3 million. That's the accumulation of your Social Security retirement income uh, if you retire at... Uh, uh, that full retirement age uh, through that time period. If you delay, you can see that amounts even higher. So if you delay and claim at age 70, if you say you're going to work a little longer, or if you're going to use your investment income and you're going to push off Social Security a few years, that's a $1.5 million benefit. If you went to your clients as an advisor and said, hey, there's $1.5 million potential asset I'm never going to talk to you about your clients would probably say, whoa, time out. Yes, please talk with us about that. Um, if it's a couple, that's a $3 million benefit, right? Two people together is a potentially $3 million benefit. Um, so Social Security plays a very important part. Um, even if you're in your 50s and your 40s, um, be thinking about Social Security. Certainly when folks start doing claiming strategies, advisors do not know enough about Social Security to help them through that. And we definitely, um, address that in the RMA. I love this chart. This is such a good one. You know, our folks at JP Morgan Asset Management put a great guide to retirement together. This is where we got this slide and they do a nice job. But so often advisors think, oh, I work with high income folks. They're not that worried with retirement. Trust me, they've paid in Social Security all these years. They care about getting some money back out of Social Security. And if you look at this chart, that purple there in the middle, even someone with that's retired getting $100,000 a year of income, almost 32% of their income or 30% of their income is coming from Social Security, right? Almost 40%. If you told your client, hey, for 40% of your income, we're not going to pay that much attention to. Just go figure it out on your own. Again, they'd say, well, time out. Are you actually doing a good job as an advisor? Are you helping me take a a comprehensive look at all the things that go into creating my, my retirement paycheck. Um, and even that $250,000, imagine telling your client that uh, we're gonna, you might get a 15% pay cut because we're not paying attention to your social security. No, they actually are gonna care. So having, having an understanding of where this fits into the clients, how the benefits make a difference, how this changes the other pieces, how this can change the risks that your clients are exposed to by having that benefit as part of their income plan. So I, I love this chart, it's a good one. Right, moving on to Medicare costs. Well, this, this is definitely, if we, if we think Social Security doesn't get enough attention from the typical financial planner advisor, Medicare is, is even um, more abused, right? Medicare gets even less attention. Um, it's definitely um, in the, the junk drawer or in the closet in the very back or the very top, or it's the, the pair of shoes that you only wear once a year. You don't think about it too much. Again, this is the, this is the uncomfortable thermostat that people are thinking about healthcare. They're thinking about Medicare. They may not be calling you and saying, I'm concerned about this. They may just be kind of figuring out that on their own. That's the waking up in the middle of the night sweating, but not getting up to turn the thermostat down. You could be the thermostat. Right, your role is to right help lower the pressure, help lower the temperature for those clients. But look at this. I mean, if you think of you know today, the average uh, sixty-five year old of five hundred dollars a month, monthly amount per person of five hundred dollars per month in these premiums and these costs. This doesn't include right the potential healthcare shock 
our healthcare crisis uh, or dealing with Alzheimer's or dealing with long-term care, this is basic Medicare or medical expenses, so, so huge. And if you're an advisor building in these expenses in their retirement income plan, look at how that grows, right? From age 65 to age 95, you know, a tripling from roughly 500 to $1,500 over those 30 years. And if you're not building this in to your client's financial plan and having a, a very specific uh, way to address their healthcare expenses and so that you see that part B and part D that you're making the right choices, this is a, can literally be a landmine full of bad decisions that could impact your clients. So well, this is definitely something that we address in the RMA that we take very seriously. Uh, in a way that fits for, we know you're not offering for most advisors, most advisors aren't selling insurance, they're not selling Medigap, we get that, but certainly ringing the bell for clients to help them make those decisions, being an additional resource, and how this fits into their financial plan and their investments, right? Um, so uh, this is such an important one, we're so glad we're able to cover that in, in the RMA curriculum. Awesome. Well, Mike, we are so lucky to have you on today. Thank you so much for talking about curriculum, the why, why earn the RMA, and of course, the importance of those social programs. Um, we're going to have you hang on with us to answer some Q&A at the end of today's presentation, but I'm going to dive in here to the, um, the steps. How do I earn the RMA? I have no doubt Mike and his awesome analogies that we love here at the Institute um, has convinced you that RMA is the right fit. So what steps do you take next to pursue um, applying through investmentsandwealth.org is simply step one. We have an online application process, a background check. Typically, our team asks for about five to seven days to complete, um, review your application and acceptance into the program. Then you would dive into the online um, RMA online course um, through eight modules that consist of on-demand readings, recordings, lectures, quizzes, activities, and case studies. Um, and then you'd follow that up with a capstone. Um, we have two options there. We just wrapped up our in-person capstone that Mike mentioned, a great um, conjunction to our annual conference in Nashville last week. So for the remaining of 2022, we have two options for you to complete that capstone uh, portion of the curriculum. We have a live virtual, meaning you'd log in to an online platform and you'd hear from a live instructor teaching the material that you covered in the online course. Um, you have two options there for the remainder of the year, September 7th and 8th and 14 and 15th. Each day is four hours long. I believe that's a Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday to complete that capstone event. And again, in November 9th through 10th and 16th and 17th. If that's not an option for you and dedicating you know, those four days, four hours um, a piece, we have uh, the capstone offered on demand virtually as well. So some great resources for you for the capstone. And then lastly, that final exam. And we'll dive into what that exam looks like for you um, here in a, just a little bit. Oh, excuse me. Um, so we have the advisor challenge where the summer advisor challenge that deadline is June 1st, which is just around the corner, um, a week from tomorrow, I believe. So go ahead and join us. We, we think that the RMA can be achieved within a hundred days. We've heard from advisors that they like that motivation to move through the program, move for, through that curriculum, those online learning modules, the capstone and the, the final exam. So this June 6th kickoff date to September 3rd really sets that parameter um, to earn within 100 days and um, get the RMA certification. So again, join us, apply by June 1st with that kickoff call being June 6th and start the RMA program, which um, is a $2495, $2,495 cost for the program. Um, payment will be due in full at the time of application online. Here's just a quick outline of what you'll look like for those 10 weeks as you go through the program. Um, you see we have an orientation and kickoff call, some check-ins throughout the period. It's just a nice way to create some structure around the program itself. There is a ton of flexibility with the RMA. Excuse me, my slides keep jumping around on me. Um, ton of flexibility as you move through the program, which can be really great um, as you, you know, life and work are also important. Um, but this 100 day challenge really just allows people to create some structure around the program and have some check in and also feel a sense of community and network within that start date. 
here's an exam breakdown. Um, you can see here, you know, that client diagnostic kit that Mike mentioned takes up 53% of the exam itself. So a large component. Um, you can go ahead and take a screenshot of this. So it provides a nice breakdown of, of what to expect on the final exam. Here's some of the um, incredible speakers we have at the RMA capstone, both in person and on the um, live virtual and on-demand capstone options. Um, we're very proud of the RMA curriculum and, and those who have um, you know, raised their hand to help us create the curriculum and speak um, during the program itself. Um, we have uh, your RMA guide. So here are some great resources for you, Bob Powell, uh, Mary Corbin, Stephanie Confer, and Mike Kurz. Um, Mike, um, Stephanie, and Mary are all um, institutes, excuse me, institute um, employees and a great resource for you as you dive into the RMA program. And we here have the um, uh, scholarship program, a tuition assistance for, you know, diversity scholarship, women and wealth and RA um, excellence. So if you feel that you are, uh, you can apply for these programs up to $1,000 can be awarded uh, towards the that $2,495 um, cost of the program. If you have any questions about if you would um, be awarded a scholarship, feel free to reach out to Gray or myself um, about the, the details of the scholarship program. And lastly, I just wanted to mention this again, uh, join us with a deadline of June 1st for that summer advisor challenge for the RMA. What better way to spend your summer than diving into retirement management um, knowledge and uh, hearing from some of those great speakers that I, I mentioned previously. And um, I, I, I failed to mention um, the exam itself. And I know I said we were getting to that, but it looks like that slide was <laughs> removed. Um, the exam itself is done through uh, ProctorU. It's an online testing option. You can schedule that at your own time as you move through the RMA curriculum. It's a hundred multiple choice question, three hour long exam. Um, and that $24.95 includes that exam fee. Um, so just wanted to add that in there since I had promised it earlier in the conversation. And hopefully you're ready to chat, learn more about the RMA, how it, you know, what program works best for you, that capstone event. Um, Gray and myself are available, as is Mike, um, to talk about the RMA curriculum and the program. So take a screenshot here and um, feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you for joining us. We're going to dive into any questions we have um, concerning the RMA program. Um, I'm going to move it back here to our contact information in case you uh, want to take a screenshot or, or jot down any numbers or emails. And I'm going to have Gray Hi. Um, log on and help us answer some questions. Hi, everybody. Yeah, uh, we, looks like we have a few questions coming in. Um, uh, just we had a few questions regarding the capstones. Uh, any ideas for when the next capstones will be uh, and where? Yeah, I'm going to let Mike take that one. I, I um, haven't memorized the 2023 calendar, so maybe Mike can help us. Yeah, absolutely. We're super excited. We had we had four we have four capstones uh, in 2022. Two have already happened. We had one in Florida and one in Nashville. Those two have already complete and completely done. And then we have two more in the future. So if you're thinking of signing up for the RMA, the next two are online and completely virtual. They will be live. Um, so the, the next one is September, uh, and then uh, the, if September doesn't work, we do have events in November. So the September dates uh, are, uh, there's four days, it's the 14th, 15th, um, excuse me, the 7th and 8th, and the 14th and 15th, and it's about four hours a day all together, kind of in that 15, 16 hours of uh, content and instruction. Um, all live, but it'll be um, uh, online on Zoom. So uh, location is wherever you want to be, which makes it easy. Uh, and then we will record sessions. So if folks um, happen to miss a part of a session, you'll have that available for about 30 days um, after the session. And then November is the 9th and 10th and 16th and 17th, those four days. And like I said, about four hours a day. We do have it on our website. It's under the uh, the RMA certification area, and then under schedules, uh, if folks want to dig in and um, and look at that, uh, we'd be happy to happy to share that online. Or if you want to call and talk more about what fits what fits for your schedule or uh, how, how what's included, all those kind of things, we'd be happy to do that as well. 
Excellent. Thank you, Mike. Great. Thanks, Mike. And um, we'd also mention our June 1st summer um, advisor challenge uh, that Carrie mentioned in the presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, I hadn't I included that link in our chat box for you all. That's on our website, all the details there. Um, so please uh, let us know if you have any questions. I know we had a few here that had just been answered uh, online, which is great. Yeah, common one we get is continuing education. So RMA being a you know a certification program, we do require 40 hours of continuing education every two years to hold your RMA certification. Um, so CE can be through a lot of different avenues. We here at the Investments and in Wealth Institute really pride ourselves in the education that we offer. So our certificate programs, in-person conferences, like we mentioned, our ACE event um, just last week, are great ways to really gain a ton of knowledge in the financial services sector, but also um, get continuing education towards your RMA certification. Um, and then I do want to mention we we have a ton, we offer or, or um, accept a ton of other continuing education through a wide variety of avenues. Yeah, we get we also we get um, questions on if folks are already part of the investments and wealth membership through either the the SEMA designation or the CPWA. Um, it's only one one membership fee, uh, one certification fee. If you have two certifications, I have the SEMA and CPWA. It's not it's not a double cost. It's just one single membership cost, which is a nice benefit. And if you have your SEMA and CPWA, the RMA counts for 40 full um, hours. So if you um, or if you're looking at um, delivering on your uh, your 40 hours of credit that's required every two years as a SEMA and CPWA. You could do the RMA and completely um, satisfy that and CFP credit as well, not 40 hours for CFP. I think it's more in the 20 ish plus hours for, for CFP and doesn't include the special CFP ethics, uh, but it gets you a ton of a uh, ton of CFP hours as well. Correct. Well, excellent. Um, I don't see any other questions that have come in. Gray, do you have any additional that I'm just missing? <laughs> No, I was just checking, but, um, you know, again, if you have any follow-up questions for us, you know, this webinar was just uh, slotted for 30 minutes. So please um, send us an email or give us a call. We'll be happy to, to cover them then. If you can't think of any right now, that's fine. Uh, as you look through, the, you know, our website and have any questions about the upcoming uh, challenge or anything like that, please let us know. Excellent. Yeah. June 1st. Don't miss, don't miss it. We'll have a kickoff call June 6th. So uh, like Grace said, feel free to reach out. Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. We're always lucky to have you on, on the team and um, look forward to hearing from you guys. Take care.